Well, good day and welcome to MCC. It's great that you can be with us this morning, uh, wherever you might be joining in from. Uh, we've got a group with us again in the downstairs hall, so it's great for them to be with us uh, and uh, great for wherever you are watching us from here on Sunday. Uh, now this week's been a bit of a difficult week as you can well imagine, some further lockdowns and stuff like that. So uh, our big shout out to our friends down in Victoria as well at the moment. We're thinking of you um, and for us in New South Wales, it still feels a little bit difficult out there, but uh, hopefully um, again, things will start to improve sometime soon. Now, you would have seen the bulletin this week. Uh, if you haven't seen the bulletin, you can get a copy of it on our website. Uh, so just click the What's On and Latest News link and you can get a copy of the bulletin there. A few things I just want to draw to your attention in there um, is there's a couple of kids videos within that. So if your kids want to sort of get involved with today's service, there's some links at the end of that bulletin you can log on to and get some of the, Qu the QuizWorks kids material. That's always good to look at. Also, for those that are interested in uh, helping out with the FCC, their annual assembly is usually held in September. This year it's probably going to be a little bit different, but uh, we're still seeking nominations for the various committees and offices in that. The nomination form's in our bulletin, so click on that link and get that form back to us by the end of August as well. That's all the real news I've got to, to present to you, but let's, um, let's just open our service up in prayer uh, and look forward to hearing what Jeremy's got to say for us in a few minutes' time. Father God, you are our almighty and everlasting God. Mm. We just thank you for what you do for us. We thank you for everything that you've given us. Father, we pray for those in Victoria at the moment that are in lockdown again. Uh, we would just pray that you, you're reaching them and you're keeping them safe and well, uh, despite the pandemic that's going on. Be with us as well, Lord, uh, wherever we might be, uh, that you'll continue to keep us strong in our faith and continue reaching out to others. Father, be with Jeremy this morning as he brings us his message from 1 Peter. And Lord, uh, we look forward to seeing each other again sometime soon in person uh, once this pandemic starts to calm down a bit more. We pray this all in your son's name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
saying good afternoon for those of us that are here live, but also for those who are watching us uh, however you are, on your mobile phone or your laptop or your iPad or TV screen, it's a good morning to you. Uh, but wherever you are, it's great to have your company um, with us as we share around God's Word. Beth and I have just got back um, from a couple of days in orange. I will say that it was fresh. Beth will tell you that it was freezing. <laughs> But the sky was blue and the sun was out and we had a couple of days just exploring some of the towns out there in that sort of great, greater western area or region. Um, and it really is nice out there actually. So we're looking at some properties and uh, cafes and uh, etc. We had some, for the very first time we bought some, oh what do they call it, uh, grows in the ground in the roots of trees, truffle, had some truffle. Ever had some truffle before? It's expensive. Just a clump of it was $150, but he broke off a little piece and gave it to us for 10 bucks. But uh, it stinks. But anyway, we can say we had some truffle. So, so that was nice. I'd like to do something we haven't done before. Wonderful. So let's have uh, a moment of prayer and then we'll open our Bibles to the book of First Peter. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for the opportunity to explore the book of first peter and look in particular at the person and work of the holy spirit pray holy spirit that you will be present with us with me as the speaker and also for those that are listening help us to engage and uh, we open up our hearts and our minds uh, to the person and work of the holy spirit these things we pray in jesus name everybody said Amen. 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 So we're going to look. Pastor Heath uh, gave us that series um, just a few weeks ago, concluded looking at the book of First Peter, took us through those five chapters. Um, and so I just wanted to follow that on. And so we'll stay in the book of First Peter. And uh, I particularly want to look at the person and work of the Holy Spirit. And so we're going to be looking at that together over the next uh, four weeks. But let me start off with a couple of stories. It was 1977. I remember the year well because I was in year seven, my first year of high school in Adelaide in 1977. And of course, some of you would be familiar with 
the death of uh, the King Elvis Presley on the 16th of August 1977. And uh, I guess many people will be remembering him next week uh, on, on the 16th. But it was 1977, we were living in a house in Elizabeth. In fact, it was 22 Encounter Road, uh, Elizabeth Downs in Adelaide. That's where I grew up, did all of my primary school and high school uh, at that place. I am, and most of you know that I am, a PK. I'm a pastor's kid. I'm also a Pentecostal kid. And uh, proud of my Pentecostal heritage. And, uh, but it took me a long time. It took, in fact, it took me... Uh, many years for me to appreciate um, Pentecost, for me to appreciate the person and the work of the Holy Spirit um, in my life. It was for me growing up in a Pentecostal church, and I can probably say this, uh, and maybe some of you, maybe it may resonate with you, but I've probably seen and heard everything there is to see and hear uh, in relation to particularly the manifestations of the Spirit, you know, and a lot of it is kind of weird and wacky and uh, but there's a lot of genuine, authentic um, work of, of, of the Holy Spirit as well. But I do remember 1977. I remember I turned 13 and my mum sat me down. Both my parents are, are, were, they're in heaven now, but they're um, Pentecostal uh, pastors. And I remember my mum sitting me down on a, on a chair, sim similar to that one there. Uh, Bob sat me on a chair in the middle of the lounge room, closed the door, and she was going to pray for me until... I received what we would say is the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, this, this heavenly language. I was not engaged at all, but I knew it was coming when we turned 13. That was what was going to happen. Mum was going to pray for us and passionately pray and, and just keep on praying. And I remember five minutes went by, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour. And I'm thinking to myself, I just want to get out of here, you know, to be honest. I just was not engaged at all. But my mum was determined. In the end, I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to make it up. And so I just come up with a bit of jibber-jabber and my mum bought it and she said, son, you've, you've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you're speaking in tongues, you know. And it was almost like I felt like I'm saved now. Not that I believe that. I think it's an encounter, an experience subsequent to salvation experience. But it was that kind of feel. And so I got up and went and played football and, you know, that was it. Jeremy's baptized in the Holy Spirit. But for me, it was just an encounter, an experience that I, I just was not, I, I was completely disengaged with it. There were a few other things happening around that time as well that kind of just put me off Pentecost, put me off Pentecostalism, put me off the, the Holy Spirit and the work of the Holy Spirit, if I'm really honest with you. I, I remember my parents gave me the King James Bible. That's what I was given to read. And the language in the King James Bible around the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God was referred to as, some of you would know, the Holy the Ghost. That's it, Tony. The Holy Ghost, you know. Well, for me, ghosts just scare me. As soon as you say Holy Ghost, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not there, you know. Uh, my mind goes to the spirit world and to, you know, um, you know, all this other sort of supernatural, spiritual stuff. And, and it was in that sort of space. Holy Ghost, I, 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 I'm not interested. Disengaged. The other thing that, that happened every single Sunday morning, this is what I grew up with, year after year after year, a little lady in our church, a little British lady, would get up every Sunday morning. I grew up in a church that was around about eight, ten thousand 10,000 people. And every Sunday morning, she would get up, she would walk to the front of the church where there was a microphone, and she would bring a message in tongues. And then it would be interpreted by somebody else. And she would stand up every single Sunday morning, and she would give this message in tongue. It was the same tongue. She would simply stand up, go to the front, and she would say, Karani to Karanoto, Karanoto, Karani to Karani to Karanoto, Karanoto, Karani to Karani to Karanoto, with such passion. And, and, and then it would go for about a minute, then she would sit down. And I would hear that week after week after week, and I think to myself, what is this? What is this, you know? And then we would have this uh, man would get up after this message in tongue, and he would bring the interpretation of this tongue. And it was the same interpretation every single Sunday. We're talking about year after year after year after year after year, every Sunday morning. We'd have the current eater, current order, and then we would have the interpretation. 
God loves you with an everlasting love. With an everlasting love. God loves you. God's love is everlasting. His love will last forever. It's an everlasting love that God loves with you. Uh, and blah, 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 blah. You know, and then he'd sit down for about a minute. So that was my sort of experience. And then we've got people swinging from chandeliers, quacking like ducks, and, and all of that kind of activity around the person and work of the Holy Spirit. And to be honest, I was disengaged. I didn't want that for my life. I'm happy to go to church. I'm happy to give of my money. I'm happy to engage in other ways. If I'm really honest, it was probably more the social engagement at that age that grabbed me and, and had me coming back, as well as being the pastor's kid and all the expectations around that. Kenny, you would appreciate what that's about. Yes, sir. But when it comes to the person and work of the Holy Spirit, my reflection is one of sadness. In fact, I wish I knew then what I knew now around the person and work of the Holy Spirit. Now, once we get back into our building upstairs, okay, I'm not going to start swinging from, uh, you know, uh, light shades and, 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 and all of that sort of stuff. But my thought for us now is, and for myself, what is my belief and practice now around the person and work of the Holy Spirit? May I ask you the question, those of you here and those of you watching, you know, on uh, you know, Sunday morning now, what, what is your belief and practice around the person and work of the Holy Spirit? Some may say faith believes first, then seeks to understand. And that certainly has been my experience. I believe it, I believe it, then I'll seek to understand it. And I guess that has been my journey with the person and work of the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in Pentecost. I believe in tongues. I, I believe in the manifestations and the work, the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit. But I want to understand it as well. I don't want to blindly accept it and just go along with it. But I do want to understand it. So what do we believe? And I think for me, there's no better place than 1 Peter. And so that's where I would like us to go over the next few weeks to have a look at the person of the Holy Spirit and to have a look at the ministry or the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives as individuals and in our, uh, our church, our community, MCC. Particularly as we're looking at our vision of joining Jesus in the renewal of all things. And I said it last week, that renewal is a work, a ministry of the Holy Spirit. So that's where we're going and uh, I hope that we can engage in this together. Uh, so we're in 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 1. Martin Luther describes 1 Peter as one of the grandest epistles. And perhaps for good reason. Because in the book of 1 Peter, there is the breadth of theology. There's a breadth of Christology. There's a breadth and, 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 a, and a, a depth of, of eschatology. But there also is pneumatology. The study of the Holy Spirit. And this is where I'd like us to land. I'd like us together to identify and examine what many scholars believe to be the three indisputable references to the Holy Spirit in 1 Peter. Now, I started off by being a bit of a smart aleck before the camera actually rolled, and so uh, I'm not wanting to be a smart aleck here, but in the research that I've done, and certainly with the help of, uh, of a New Testament scholar by the name of David Parker, he... Uh, has identified a further eight references to the Holy Spirit in the book of First Peter. When you think about it, if there's three references in five chapters, perhaps it's not a major focus of Peter. And let's keep in mind who's who the writer, who the author is. This, this is Peter. Yeah? Remember Peter, the one who stood up on the day of Pentecost and preached this amazing sermon, and, and we had the birth of the church. But I believe that there are 11 references to the Holy Spirit in the book of 1 Peter. And so we're going to look at them together. We're going to start with the three indisputable references to the Holy Spirit. And then we'll furthermore look at the other eight references. So let's start and uh, I'm going to read um, the first of the indisputable references to the person and work of the Holy Spirit. And it's found in 1 Peter 1 and verse 2. 1 Peter 1, so if you want to have a look at it together... 1 Peter 1 and verse 2, but I'm going to read verse 1 and verse 2 as well. 1 Peter 1. It says, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's elect, strangers in the world, scattered throughout 
Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia and Bithynia. Verse 2, here it is, the first reference to the person and work of the Holy Spirit in 1 Peter, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Spirit. Here's the first reference, the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit, or if you've got a King James Bible, it's going to say the sanctifying work of the Holy Ghost. Yeah, <laughs> The Holy Spirit for obedience to Jesus Christ and sprinkling by his blood. That's probably another word that put me off as a teenager. Well, all this talk about the blood, the blood, the blood. But I'm over it now. It's okay. <laughs> I'm all for it. So what do we have here in this first reference to the person and work of the Holy Spirit? Allow me to take a couple of minutes just to unpack it. So we have here Peter, the apostle. Peter is an apostle according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. Peter is an apostle by the Spirit's sanctifying work. You're following me in the text. Peter's apostleship is connected to obedience to Jesus Christ. Now, what is true for Peter is also true for his readers. Follow with me. These dispersed new believers, these elect strangers, and maybe you can still hear Heath as he, as he brought this out to us a few weeks ago. These, these strangers, these pilgrims, these dispersed new Christians scattered about all over uh, Asia. What was true for Peter is true for them. Their election as God's people is according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. Their election as God's people is by the Spirit's sanctifying work. Their election as God's chosen people is connected to obedience to Jesus Christ. You with me? Now, what is true for Peter is true for the immediate readers, these scattered, dispersed strangers, but is also true for you and I. Yeah? It's true for Peter, the apostle. It's true for those who, who he was writing to, but it's also true for you and I. As Christians today, as disciples of Jesus Christ, as followers of Jesus Christ, our faith in Jesus Christ our fellowship, if you like, uh, of Jesus is according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. Or if we were to put it another way, it is part of God's plan. I love that. It's part of God the Father's foreknowledge, part of his plan that all of us in this room today would be following Jesus Christ, would be disciples of Jesus Christ, worshippers and servers of Jesus Christ by the foreknowledge of God the Father. I find that very significant for us, particularly as I think about our church community, MCC, and the generations that are in this church. I want to say to you today, you are in this church not just because your grandparents are in this church. You are part of God's plan as a believer, as a follower of Jesus Christ, not because you're hanging on to the coattails of your mum and dad who have been here forever or your grandparents that have been here forever. Individually, God had you in mind. His foreknowledge of your salvation and of your fellowship and the sanctifying work of the Spirit and the obedience to Jesus Christ that's in that is part of his wonderful plan for you and I. Amen. I don't believe I'm here by accident. Now, you voted on me and voted uh, apparently unanimously yes. Thank you very much for that. But that was part of God's foreknowledge. That was part of God's plan. Yeah, I believe that. It's not by accident. It's not that I didn't have a job and this one was going, so I took it and just hoped that you, you know, voted yes. No, it's all part of God's wonderful foreknowledge and plan. And what was true for Peter and true for his, the immediate writers, is true for you and I. We are following Jesus today. Some of you that are friends of people. And I won't name you today, but you know who you are. You're in this church because you were invited by a friend. It's more than that invitation. You are part of God's plan of salvation for this world. And you are here not by accident. 
not even, well, I'm going to say not by choice. It, it, the choice is involved in it, but you are here worshipping Jesus, serving Jesus, engaged in this community because of the foreknowledge of God the Father. Come on, somebody say amen. <laughs> but secondly, we are Christians, we are followers of Jesus Christ by the Spirit's sanctifying work. We're here because of his foreknowledge, his plan before the foundation of the world. We can go to Psalm 139, we can go to so many passages. Our election is part of his foreknowledge, his plan. But also, we are Christians here today by the Spirit's sanctifying work. You say, what is this sanctifying work? I mean, that's another one of those words, isn't it? You know, Holy Ghost, blood, sanctification. What are these words? You know, Here's the thought, though. If you're not sure about this word sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit, let me replace that word sanctify with another word. And I'm not going to replace it with this particular word because it kind of fits my language at the moment and fits, you know, what we've been talking about. But this word renewal is a perfect fit for this word sanctification. The renewing work of the Holy Spirit. We are here today because of the renewal, the renewing work Use the word sanctify, sanctifying, if you like. Either word, it's a work of the Holy Spirit, and that is why we're here. Sanctification is the renewal of our fallen nature. And the effects of it. Sanctification, or this work of renewal, is this work of the Holy Spirit in which by when we are delivered from the sting and the power of sin and guilt and shame and all those other areas that are, that are associated with our old nature. It's the renewal of this old nature. This work of sanctification, this work of renewal is also not about what we've been delivered from and thank God we are delivered from sin. And the sting and the stench and the smell of it. And the grip that it had on our lives before we came into salvation. Hallelujah. But it's not just what we've been delivered from. It's also the work of the Spirit that enables us and empowers us to worship and serve and love Jesus. It's not just my natural choice to worship Him. It's not your natural choice either. It's actually a work of the Spirit. It's His enabling power. It's his influence in our life. It's this work of the Spirit that enables us to worship and serve Jesus. I'm a fairly passionate person and I'm a fairly enthusiastic person. But it's not that alone that enables me to worship God and to serve God and to be a pastor and to lead. Neither was it for Peter the Apostle. You can call yourself whatever. But if you haven't got that enabling power of the Holy Spirit, the person and the work of the Holy Spirit, and if you're not engaged in that, then you can call yourself whatever, but there won't be the fruit. You might come up with a couple of good works, but when tested by fire, unless it is empowered by the Spirit, unless it comes out of a relationship with Jesus, a relationship with the Holy Spirit, then it's just hot air. Or as Paul describes, it's just a... A loud bang or a clashing symbol or whatever the scripture is there. So this sanctifying work, this work of renewal of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, boy, we need it. You need it to be a builder. You need it to be an electrician. I need it to be a father. I need the empowerment and the enabling of the Holy Spirit to be a, a, a good husband. And my Christian faith needs it it's not as if I've just been saved by the foreknowledge of God and then God says off you go worship me off you go serve me do the best you can it doesn't work that way does it <laughs> it's okay God thank you for your salvation thank you for your foreknowledge of me thank you for your your son Christ thank you for the cross thank you for the blood yes amen every day thank you but I need your help. I need your presence. I need your touch. I need your power. I need you, Holy Spirit. 
Whatever you might think of Benny Hinn, some of you may uh, know who he is, but he wrote a book that I read over and over again. It was simply entitled Good Morning Holy Spirit. And it birthed something in me that most days, not every day, Craig, but most days I get up and I say, Good morning, Holy Spirit. What am I saying? I'm acknowledging that I can't go today without you. In fact, I'm thinking now on my feet, didn't somebody say that? Unless you go with me, I won't go. Who was that? Some Bible scholars here. Come on, Bob, who said that? Unless you go, I won't go. You know? It's a bit like that. The acknowledgement of the sanctifying or the renewing work of the Holy Spirit. Thirdly, our faith in following Jesus is connected to obedience to Jesus Christ. This is the text of three thoughts there. The foreknowledge of God the Father, the sanctifying work of the Spirit. Some of you are sitting there thinking, hang on a minute, I thought that whole sanctifying thing, that renewal thing, was to make us more like Jesus. Yes, it is. <laughs> Yes, it is. I can't become more like Jesus on my own. I need the Holy Spirit. Oh, yes, we can have tongues and we can swing from the chandelier. If you want that, go for it. But don't let that be at the expense of the sanctifying work, the renewal of the old nature that only the Holy Spirit can do. But this connection to obedience. You see, renewal... The renewal of all things. Renewal is a partnership with the Holy Spirit in obedience to Jesus Christ. It's in the text. We cannot renew ourselves. Obedience is the basis. It's the spine, if you like. It's the core of our partnership and this renewing or this sanctifying work of the Spirit. Or I could put it another way. The Holy Spirit does the work, yeah, in partnership with our obedience. It requires our obedience to Jesus. It requires you and I to say yes to the work of sanctification or the work of renewal. Can you see this? In 1 Peter 1 verse 2. Foreknowledge of the Father... That's why we're here. The sanctifying work of the Spirit, the renewing work of the Spirit, that we are going to say yes to as an act of obedience to Jesus Christ. This is what Jesus wants for us, to become more like him. I'm thinking of that verse that says we're changed day by day, line upon line, precept upon precept. We're changed, ever changing to become more like Jesus. That's not a work that we can muster up ourselves, no matter how much strength. We talked about that last week that we've got. We need to open up ourselves to the work of the Holy Spirit. As I was preparing, I was thinking to myself, what would be the best way to, to paint this picture of sanctification or this picture of renewal? And I thought, what better way to conclude this morning, but also to look at what this work looks like and I thought, why not take a snapshot of Peter's life, the author? Think about it for a moment. Fisherman to apostle. Here's this young buck that's with his brother, fishing in their father's business, and Jesus comes along and says, hey, you, follow me. And this process of renewal starts. From fisherman to apostle, called to follow Jesus. Just a snapshot. Remember Peter's day of revelation. In Matthew 16, where Jesus says to those that are standing around, who do people say that I am? You know it well. Well, some say you're Isaiah, some say you're the uh, prophet. But, and then he said, but who do you say that I am? Addressing the disciples. And it was Peter that says, I know who you are. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus responds to him and says, Blessed are you, Simon by Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I say to you, upon that rock, the rock of his confession, the revelation of who Jesus is, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. You know the verse. This amazing revelation came about how? Holy Spirit. Revelation. You and I need to have that revelation. Who is Jesus? Who is he? 
Oh, well, I, I read something in a book, you know. I, I watched some preacher on television. I can tell you who he is. No, no, we need a personal revelation. It's all part of a renewal work of the Spirit. What about Peter when he's fishing all night? That's his trade and catches nothing. In a sea, in a space that he knew, that's where we catch the fish, caught nothing. Jesus says, hey guys, Peter, throw your net on the other side. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Throws it on the other side. Obedience. Obedience. And what does he catch? More fish, the nets are breaking. Have to call some other boats over. Hey boys, we've got some fish. That was Peter. It was Peter who walks on the water. If that be you, Jesus, call me. Okay, come. Obedience. But then takes his eyes off. And blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it was Peter that rebuked Jesus when Jesus sat him down and said, I'm going to have to die. No, you're not going to die. And, and, and Peter rebukes him. It was Peter that fell asleep. Couldn't stay the night and pray when Jesus says, hey, pray with me, guys. It was Peter that says, I'll never deny you, Jesus. Not me. He's in that inner circle of three people. But then we know, not long after that, there in the courtyard, it was Peter that denied Jesus three times. But it was then Peter who was by the sea. Jesus has cooked some fish and bread and, and restores Peter. Remember he asked him that question, John 15, I think it is. You know, do you love me? Yes. Do you love me? Yes. Do you love me? Yes, I love you. Why are you asking me? Of course I love you. Well, you did just deny me. <laughs> And he restores him back into relationship, back into partnership, back into the work of the ministry. It was Peter who runs to the empty tomb. And it was Peter in the upper room. This amazing day of Pentecost. There's Peter. You know, I often wonder myself, I wonder what they thought they were waiting for. But then sure enough, they found out. The sound of a, as of a rushing mighty wind there in the book of Acts. Tongues as a fire sitting upon everyone. And suddenly they were filled with the Spirit, baptised with this evidence of speaking in tongues, this heavenly language. And we know the Bible records for us that everyone outside thought that they were drunk. It's nine o'clock in the morning. But no, they were filled with the Spirit, being empowered by the Spirit for future ministry. It was Peter that then went downstairs from the upper room. And stood up. There's a message in that one. He stood in front of those that heard him deny. He stood up. And with courage that comes from the infilling and the baptism of the Spirit. And he preaches this amazing sermon. Still, I think it's probably the best gospel message ever been preached. And 3,000 people respond and the church is birthed. Peter becomes the rock from Matthew 16. It was Peter then. Who filled with the Spirit, engaging in partnership with the Spirit. This is what I'm talking about. This partnership and obedience to Jesus Christ and led by the Spirit meets that man outside Gate Beautiful who's sitting there begging for alms. Every day his begging just gave him enough to then sit there the next day and beg again. But Peter and John say, hang on a minute, we haven't got any money. I often wonder whether they did. I guess it doesn't matter. But what they did have was better than some coinage. And they said, in the name of Jesus, get up and walk. And immediately he's restored to health. And he goes into that temple singing and shouting and praising God. It was Peter. Peter the preacher, Peter the apostle, Peter the writer. But it's Peter in prison. Locked in jail. Remember that story? And there's this miraculous escape and the earth shakes and, and out he goes. It's Peter who's crucified upside down. Not worthy, he says, to be crucified in the same way his Lord was crucified. His master, his saviour, his redeemer. No, no, if you're going to crucify me, I'll be upside down. I guess what I'm trying to describe to you is a picture of renewal. A picture of the sanctifying work of the Spirit. The ups and the downs of it. One minute you're denying. One minute you're, you know, again, even that, that story of him slicing off the centurion's ear, you know, there in the garden. The ups and the downs. All night fishing for nothing. One step of obedience. And he catches more fish than he can fit in his net. 
And I just think what is true for Peter is true for us. If we're willing to engage in this revelation, accept and understand, faith-seeking understanding of the revelation that we are here in this church, not by accident, but it's by the foreknowledge of God the Father. If we're willing to open up our hearts to the sanctifying work of the Spirit, that work that, sure, in the end will make us more like Jesus. I understand that. I understand this process. Dealing with the old nature that keeps coming up every now and then. I can muster all the strength I can and all the positivity I can to say that I'm going to read my Bible tomorrow and I'm going to witness tomorrow and I'm going to do this and I'm not going to do that. But it's, it's futile without the Spirit, without the sanctifying renewal work of the Spirit. The highs and the lows of renewal. My question is, where are you in that process? Where are you in this sanctifying work, this work of renewal of the Holy Spirit? Are you allowing the Holy Spirit to work in your life? Are we as a church allowing the Spirit to work? You know, I think about the history of our church, 125 years. We're celebrating this year. Celebrations have been inter a little bit interrupted. As Narelle, you would know more than any of us. Certainly, we've appreciated the work that you put in. But, you know, 125 years doesn't just come about because we're good people doesn't just come about because, you know, many of you rolled up your sleeves and, and dug in and, and, and worked and sweated and, and gave. And, no, it was that, but it's also, we have to acknowledge that it was the work of the Spirit. That it was the work of renewal. Sure, I'm sure there was, and, and I, I was talking, and, and you, remember, you may remember, and I'm trying to remember your name now, and I shouldn't have said that because now you know I've forgotten your name, but I'm trying to remember it. But, um, you know, um, Mr. Drake. <laughs> Uh, Carolyn and Ken. Ken. You know, Ken and I, you remember Ken, we were talking about that leadership and that vision years and years and years and years ago that birthed what we see and what we have today. Where has that gone? I'm believing for a renewal of vision and leadership in our church that will see us not recreate the old glory days. I'm hearing about those, okay, but new manifestations of the Spirit, a new work of the Spirit, because there's more people to be saved, there's more people to engage in the foreknowledge of the Father and the sanctifying work of the Spirit and obedience to Christ. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm hungry for. We can rejoice in our history, but we also look forward and we say, Father, we accept your plan for our life. And we open up our hearts to your sanctifying, renewal work of the Spirit. And we're willing to say yes. You know, in some respect, that's what it takes. It takes you and I just simply say yes to the Holy Spirit. Yes. 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 Come on, let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for this first reference of the Holy Spirit person and work of the Holy Spirit in the book of 1 Peter. We've only got 10 to go. But we acknowledge your foreknowledge and your plan for our lives and for our church. We acknowledge the work of your Spirit. We acknowledge that the Holy Spirit is not just a power but the person of the Holy Spirit. It's here in the first verse. <laughs> the triune God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And we're willing to be a people that are obedient to you. We thank you for the sprinkling of your blood, the sacrifice on the cross. We keep that as the main thing, the central object of our faith, the cross of Jesus Christ. Help us, we pray, in this endeavour of renewal. In Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. 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 We're going to go to a video. It's a song by a friend of mine, Pastor Ted Evans. And uh, I encourage you, don't tune out now, but just engage in this song. It's just a song that welcomes the Holy Spirit. Why don't you take a few minutes just to, just to allow that song to minister to you. Uh, and you might want to sing along if you know the words as well. But just take a moment just before we rush off for that uh, lunch or whatever it might be. And uh, we look forward to being with you next week. And we'll look at the second indisputable reference to the Holy Spirit. Maybe you might want to read First Peter this week and see if you can identify the
that will ever come close Nothing compares You're our living hope Your presence, Lord I've tasted and seen Of the sweetest of love When my heart becomes free My shame is undone Your presence, Lord Holy Spirit, you are welcome here Come flood this place and fill the earth Thanks again for joining us uh, here, MCC Online, this Sunday. And thanks again, Jeremy, for sharing God's Word with us. 
Really looking forward to the next few weeks as you continue to take us through the Holy Spirit in 1 Peter. Now, I've got a couple of shout outs to finish the day. First, good old Ruth Gardner, and many of you have heard from her over this time because she's been ringing every person in the directory that she can find to say good day and check on up, up on us. Sorry, Ruth, I missed your call, but I do know you turned 90, so next time you ring, I'm going to say happy birthday to you. And even more amazingly, uh, we've been able to reach 100 in two different ways. Firstly, we've reached 100 chairs, so we've now taken in enough funds to, to have 100 chairs. We've still got 250 to go, and if you've been holding back, now's the time to be able to contribute towards that. But the other 100 that's been reached, almost, on August the 14th is Jean Brown. So a big shout out to you, Jean. Happy 100th. We're looking forward to being able to celebrate that with you as much as is possible in this time. Wonderful. Thank you, Heath, for those words. And certainly I want to add my congratulations to the birthday girls. It's a great achievement. We hope you're able to celebrate uh, as best you can. Um, I'm with Tony, who's going to just close in prayer for us. Thanks, Tony. Thank you. Loving God and Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you for being here and uh, we're just very much aware of God's love and uh, we've seen that today. We've heard about uh, the three-in-one God that we all worship and our Holy Spirit uh, has directed and guided us through our lives today and uh, we just pray that uh, he will continue to do just that. Yeah. And uh, I pray uh, for all those people that have been watching today that they may be uh, inspired by the message and uh, their lives through the Holy Spirit is uh, directing and guiding them uh, to love God and to love those people around them. So we thank you once again, Lord, for being uh, here today and uh, we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Yeah.